It's 704. I'm calling um, the meeting of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee uh, to start. Thank you all. We apologize for the snafu. Um, I'm going to try and move some things along. Um, because I know somebody has to leave, um, what I want to do is first, um, where, where's Beth? Beth isn't here yet. Okay. Um, why don't we, all right, why don't I start with what's going on with the uh, Darien Library grant um, increase? Um, Darien Library has come back to the town. It was addressed last night at the um, uh, Tuesday at the Board of Finance meeting. Um, the truck that they use to plow is beyond its last leg or tire for that matter. Um, they're looking for a new truck. Um, there is, um, because um, there is precedent that we actually, um, the town actually purchased this truck because um, if they don't have a truck to plow and salt, the estimated cost of having that consistently plowed is about 20 to 25,000 a year. That's what it used to be. It's part of the reason why we went and purchased the truck for them because the 20 to 22 ends up adding to their grants since we pick up the operating costs. So this is a two year payback on a truck. Um, we're gonna be the only committee assigned to this. Um, what happens here is um, it's going to be a special appropriation. The estimated cost of the truck is twenty-eight thousand. Another five thousand for the um, salter. Another five thousand for the uh, plow. That was all in the um, documents that I sent on the board of finance. Um, even we will not be addressing this until the Friday, I mean, to the February RTM meeting. I just wanted to get it out of the way while we have it here. Um, the Board of Selectmen will not be addressing this. They're the one body that would uh, need to approve and hasn't yet. Um, would need to approve prior to it coming to the full RTM. Um, they will not be getting, the, they're going to put in the order for the truck, but anybody who's familiar with what's going on with trucks and car dealerships, um, because of the chip shortage, there's a automobile and truck shortage. So we anticipate they're going to try and do the best they can, but make sure that they do it in this year, because if they wait to the summer, by the time they get the authorization to do it, um and buy it they're going to miss next snow season as well potentially so um i need a motion for um the rtm to and the town to increase the library darian library grant by thirty-eight thousand for the purchase of a truck to plow the snow do i have somebody move that motion i have martha moving james says the second um are there any questions or go ahead, Iris? Um, why wouldn't the town just plow the library? Um, I don't know. Um, I can't answer that, but I think um, it has something to do with the fact that they're responsible. It's it's not our town property. They're responsible for their private property. It's not like we could help the schools because the schools are maintaining town property. This is private property. I couldn't just uh, regard to that. cost from since it, it make it <laughs> plowing could be an operating cost. Um, pay their operating cost, right? Now, what we pay? Yeah, I, I do not have the answer to that. We, I'd have to get back to you. I don't mind if we defer voting on it tonight. I did want to raise it though. Again, I don't have the answer to that. I can get it. Okay. Yeah, I think I there's just... also some questions 
question around, you know, what budget is going to be maintaining this vehicle if they haven't had a vehicle within their budget before? No, they do have a vehicle now. We actually purchased the vehicle that they have and they okay. maintain it and um, do it. It's just on its last leg. And okay, so okay. to keep the oh, I that. Cost down. You know, my purchase makes a precedent. <laughs> it's not it's precedent. No, we're not precedent. This has been done before. I know. We've done this in the past. Once in seven years. Well, I'm sorry? I said once in seven years. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's when we started it. It was about seven years ago. Martha. I just wanted to say in the write-up, it said in, additional, in addition to doing plowing, they used it to move books and move tables and whatnot to various locations when they had programs and what. So just that comment. Yeah, I think, Martha, thank you, because it isn't just for snow plowing. This is a vehicle that they use, and the mm -hmm. town would not be supplying that vehicle to get to events or other things that they have to do. Mark, you had a question. Um, a mute. My, my question was similar to Martha's. I, I, I saw that. I was trying to understand how much use this vehicle gets. I, I didn't see a mileage or hours. I, I was trying to understand just to what extent this vehicle is used. A few snowstorms a year, move some books, move some tables. Um, I hate to see an asset underutilized. It's a very expensive asset. And this especially in the current environment, to go purchase one uh, versus deferring possibly uh, to, to a more opportune time to purchase a capital piece of equipment. Any, any information on that available? I, I, I honestly don't. And, and this is part of the reason I figured we can bring it here because we do have time. We're not going to bring this to the RTM until February. But, um, and, you know, the library is more than willing to join us at a meeting when we discuss it next. Um, but having this, um, being able to ask them to provide this information will be helpful. Thank you. I Any other questions? questions from people about why do we buy so many cars? So our trucks or like some people are, you know, I get a lot of questions from people about that. And so I just want to know if the town can plow it is operating. Can the, can they buy it out of their own money? I don't know. It, I know they can. They don't, they don't have the funds to do it right now. And since it's really reducing their, you know, the operating costs that the town pays for in the grant, that was part of the rationale for why we purchased it seven years ago. So it's it's really, I mean, thirty eight thousand. If this next one lasts. Um, seven years it's approximately six thousand a year to save twenty thousand a year plus the other uh movement um you know books storage setup and other things like that now, i i wish the rest of the town assets were able to give us that type of return jack we'll, we'll get more information go ahead mark jack i'm sorry but i just come from the perspective there's plenty of neighborhoods in this town that are private neighborhoods that don't buy vehicles that have much more extensive area to plow for their residents than the area that the, 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 the library takes and they contract out and find it much more economic not to commit uh, association funds i'm just wondering what the cost benefit is relative to contracting i, I heard that figure that you cited up front and i read it um to, to have the work done, contract it out. Um, I'm just curious when the last time it's been put out for bid. It, it just seems high for me, uh, to me, unless there's extraordinary circumstances given it's a public facility. Okay, I will. Um... Yeah, my neighborhood, we pay for our own plowing, and that, I'm pretty sure we don't spend $23,000 to plow it every year well i should get who's plowing you because for our small driveway we played a heck of a lot last year um jenny and i were joking about what we we're paying our plowing i mean it's not um, cheap but i don't i don't know if it's that expensive i can check i can check and find out i haven't looked i haven't looked at the exact dollar amount in a long time so 
All right, is there any, I, I'm gonna table this until our next meeting and make sure that we have somebody there to answer these questions. Um, I have no problem with that. I'm glad that we're asking these questions so we know what additional information is necessary. Is there anything else that anybody would like to um, have there? Um, if you think of it, please email me and I'll get it to um, both Kate and uh, which court and and um, Lynn, who's president, and um, Kira, who's the director. Um, so we have this. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see the tape of the Board of Finance meeting because I know there were a lot of robust questions there. Um, but I haven't seen it. And um, that Tuesday, many of us were at the Board of Ed meeting, so which had a conflict with the Board of Finance. All right. So we'll table this to the next meeting. Um, now that Beth is here, um, Beth and I had a meeting with um, Duke, Jill, um, Adley, and um, um, Rudel to go over some of the questions that we had asked during the Super Saturday and after. Um, some of them provided an additional information that was not in the um, seven dockets that they provided, although I will say for the most part, um, and I made this comment that the, the answers that we got were not only quick, but had sufficient information more so than we had had in the past. I thought the answers were informative. Of course, they led to a whole bunch more questions, but, um, that's part of what it is. So, um, Beth, do you want to um, go through um, some of the information that we got from them and um, go through our presentation and Peter also, because I know Peter's here for, for a short period of time, um, go through our presentation and tell some of the additional information that we had out of that meeting. Um, I will say that what we're starting to pose to both the Board of Ed, um, and I also did to the library, and we're gonna be doing with the town, is that the Director of Finance came before the RTM and the full town and said guidance for core was 2.5%. Overall expenses shouldn't um, be greater than three. So um, we're asking them to work with us to reformat the superintendent's presentation to identify what's core and what's growth. And on the growth side, identify between educational and educational support. So custodial is education support, the special ed driver support, um, and then go from there. So Beth, I give it to you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute myself so I don't say anything. <laughs> um, do you want me to go through the entire presentation? would love to think that some people saw it. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you've already covered that part. Uh, significant attention in this year's budget has been focused on two areas, open choice and the bring your own devices at the high school. And there's been more discussion on those issues than on the addition of the 10.7 FTEs, where the latter has a greater financial impact, both on this budget and far into the future, on the overall Board of Ed budgets. Um, and I said the committee concurs that the Board of Ed needs to have a special meeting and financial projections for the Open Choice Program. That being said, the actual cost appears to be a simple cost accounting exercise. To account for open choice as a basic cost accounting principle, the variable cost to support any student at grade level as the cost of teachers, desks, utilities, and other related sunk costs are fixed and would not change unless an additional section is created in the elementary schools. In middle and high schools, as long as the total students joining a district does not exceed the maximum of a school, again, variable costs to support the student is the total cost. This is with the safety net caveat that special education costs can be provided by the sending district or charged back to the, that district. And transportation course costs are absorbed by the sending district as well. 
So the committee, I said, was generally in favor of this initiative. Um, there, I then said there are mixed feelings on the bring your own devices. That certainly seemed to be something that people felt different ways about. The final decision, whether to implement or provide a hybrid model, will have an impact on the proposed budget, not only in equipment, but also on the new FTEs requested. And then I said, the committee feels the administration has established a compelling case for the new these new growth FTEs, the LPN that's tied to an IEP, um, the new special education driver, given the fact that their driver shortage is well-documented, new teachers for Mandarin at Middlesex, and the second grade at Hindley, uh, the special education instructor, and we'd like a bit more color on the following new FTEs. We asked for more about the paraprofessionals. The, there was a point by a para at both Oxbridge and at Holmes. And we'd like to confirm that they're based on enrollment ratios. The ratios for paras are one to 80 through one to 80, you know, like one to 89 students. So Oxbridge and Holmes both qualified for the additional para. Um, the DHS, physical education and health education, um, what's driving that, and the 0.2 FTE for the Hindley PE teacher. And then I, the committee has questions on the following FTE additions, the campus monitor at the middle school, um, since that's the second campus monitor at the middle school. This position is part of the American Rescue Plan in the current budget. We acknowledge that the better student to the combined monitor SRO ratio with this addition, and the committee understands the financial and reporting relationship differences, as well as the rationale for those differences. But we would like specific metrics used to determine improved building security, what the measurable goals are to be accomplished by the campus monitor addition, and a description of how the SROs and campus monitors overlap and work together. What are the specific differences in their goals and what areas do they each cover? For the bursar and administrative assistant, um, in reviewing the additional write-up, it appears this position has been working an additional 160 hours. And although GASB 84 will increase the number of transactions to be transferred from one system to the other, we're not sure the incremental hours over the 160 hours already being recorded have been demonstrated so that we have additional questions. 25% of the bursar's role is managing all ordering for DHS, processing requisitions, placing orders for teachers and administrators, working with departments to ensure goods are received, fielding phone calls, and working with accounts payable to provide invoices to close out purchase orders. All of those are presumably responsibilities that had to be done prior to the addition to the, of the bursar, so who is the bursar replacing? And then also, Darian is not alone in dealing with GASB 84 and School Cash Online, which is the automated payment program um, that parents use to pay for various student activities. Has an automated feed from School Cash Online to Munis been investigated or discussed? Have the outside auditors determined which components currently in the student activity accounts need to be recorded? Uh, as I, I am going to cut in here because there okay. is we have some questions but we did actually have the answers at that meeting. Uh, first of all, the GASB 84 requires those funds that are controlled by government um, versus those that are of a fiduciary nature. So if we're actually controlling the funds that the school district is, those have to be set up in a town fund and not in a student activity fund. Um, likewise, certain revenues that are coming in that are, again, town-related have to be set up in a special revenue fund. Um, in my conversation with uh, Jen Chinesky, um, those funds were established um, for the fiscal year um, 21 financial statements. So the funds are already established um, and are operational. And when we asked about, um, you know, in, in reality, why school cash online can't feed Munis, um, or could we do, you know, one entry 
for what the receipts are and then allow Munis to write the checks accordingly using School Cash Online as a subsidiary ledger. Their conversation with the um, outside auditors said that Munis needed to have um, all transactions. So it's a complete waste of human resource by taking from one system, nodding and putting it into the other. And um, so um, that's something that you know should still be looked at again, but does we had those answers prior prior to our presentation to the Board of Ed, but were unable to um, change some of our presentation. Um, I, I do have one other comment where we're coming back on is that um, Rudel looked and over the last four or five years, the bursar or person doing those jobs had already been working 160 hours more than um, what they had done in the past, you know, every year. But it was never added to the budget. So somehow they did a budget transfer to cover those expenses. And the question is, well, if you had those available funds for, to cover those expenses in the prior four or five years, why can't you cover them now from the same transfer that you've been doing over the last years? Um, or at least reduce where you were taking the money from um, to um, offset that. So that's additional questions we're putting forward. Um, Beth, Peter had another obligation, so you're gonna have to go do through the rest of the things, even his side. And I'm muting myself again. <laughs> Okay, um, the next point was the groundskeeper, the additional groundskeeper. Um, and because we hadn't believed that the compelling case has been made to substantiate this position. And the full cost for the groundskeeper that was presented is 108,000 and change, but that doesn't include future pension costs. So the actual cost is higher. Um, so our first question is if existing staff can work overtime, um, if town staff could perform some of the duties and either straight time or overtime and then charge the district, um, trying to figure out what the cost is to contract those services to an outside vendor, although that may have contract conflicts um, with the current groundskeeping staff. And then um, finally, the care of grounds historic costs have been stable. Even a 5% increase represents $15,000. So it's well below the $108,000 that this additional FTE would be. Um, the position fully loaded, even without the future pension, is 50% of the total outside contracted groundskeeping budget. So still some questions there. Um, the Oxridge custodian, we actually, found out that the square foot we were thinking that maybe the square footage of the amount of ox ridge that will be built and open for next seat next year wouldn't be substantially more than there is now but actually the square footage is increasing from 50,000 for the current school to 74,000 square feet next year um which is what is driving the increase in custodial time at ox ridge um, the technician uh, for the IT technician, uh, the committee doesn't believe that a compelling case has been made to substantiate the position in the proposed budget and should be deferred until the bring your own implementation. And we've bought all the new uh, technology that has that is currently put in this budget. Um, and we'd like an evaluation of the tickets with the that have currently been in place. The cost for this position is 104, it's almost $105,000, um, but it also doesn't include future pension costs. So it will thus be higher than stated. Um, so what we like from the administration is a three year record of repairs and tickets by the elementary schools, the middle school and the high school um, by device, broken down by device and the level of service required for each ticket. Um, but also with the purchase of new desktops, new devices for the DHS teachers, and with the bring your own device change, um, you would assume that the 
number of repairs would go down with brand new technology versus older technology. And so our suggestion would be that maybe it would make sense to defer a year and wait and see what happens with the implementation of a whole new bring your own policy and with new technology in the classrooms. Um, so also wanted to know what the budget line item shows the reduction of repairs suggested in the original presentation as an offset to current outside repairs. We wondered if it's realistic to assume that any but the easiest repairs will be performed on DHS bring your own devices. And why wouldn't the existing DHS technical staff perform those repairs as they currently do? Um, and we said we don't believe that the ratios from other districts are fully useful given that we don't know how they use their technology and what technology they're bringing so we may not be making a valid comparison that compels us to add this FTE so at the end of the day we just need more information and would prefer to defer this until after we've bought all this technology as for the technology, that was the bulk of the remaining comments, um, because there is a significant amount of technology proposed to be purchased in the midst of a documented chip shortage, um, which isn't supposed to be resolved for at least a year and probably longer. Um, and there as well as significant distribution costs being added to consumer discretionary purchases. So we asked how the proposed costs relate to the same purchase cost from the prior year and what are the increases. For the Middlesex desktops, um, we said, you know, they're, you, they're all the same desktop, regardless of whether it's for staff or administration or teachers. And so we said, we would like to know what each different department needs. You know, do the nurses really need the same desktop as a music department? Um, so we want to know what the needs are for each of the component groups requiring the desktops to be replaced, their uses, their processing speeds, and their storage requirements, um, because those those drive the cost of the device. Uh, we at also said that the unit cost seems very high, and we're wondering if there are other software costs that are added into that that are part of the purchase, and if so, what those are. For the iPads and the MacBook Airs at the, for the teachers at the high school, um, we said the committee is still not satisfied that both devices are required based on the web-based instructional capabilities and the compatibility of both with the technology in the classrooms. And wondered if the teacher MacBook Airs can be deferred until fiscal year 24 um, as the use of the pens and so forth for instructional purposes appears to be of greater benefit to the educational experience in the classroom rather than a desktop or rather a MacBook Air. Um, also, we said the teacher MacBook Airs that are proposed to be purchased are 13 inch screens and the student, the 40 student MacBook Airs um, were 12 inch screens. So we're wondering why the teachers needed the larger screen because the potential savings of making the teacher's machines the same 12 inch screen is $200 per device. And that ends up being over $20,000 and we'd like clarification. Um, for the student desktops, we asked the administration to provide the uses of the 150 student desktops, like where are they in the school? What are they used for? What storage and processing speeds are required for the use in each case? Um, and does each use really require the same capabilities? It's essentially the same question as the middle school. Um, as far as the district servers, all the servers are being replaced at the same time. What was it Rich said was that actually it's one big server with, I, this was a technical part I did not understand, is essentially one big server and the whole, Thing needs to be replaced because we were thinking it was like you know four individual servers and you could replace one one year one the next year one the year after that and so forth but apparently it's actually a larger i'm, I'm going to jump in on that they we, we do they are multiple servers but apparently all of them are at the end of their useful life and um dennis maroney made the comment which was spot on that you know 
if you don't, it doesn't make sense that we're buying everything all at one time, as opposed to moving things along um, on an annual basis, because forever long it's going to take the next five years, we're going to need to replace these three servers all at the same time again. And that just isn't good fiscal planning. Um, I did want to get back to what Jeff Adams said, which actually had me gobsmacked. Um, when um, in the Board of Ed meeting, they asked him whether or not he could um, come back to us and say what each of those business units at Middlesex and it applies the same to the high school. Um, and he said, no, <laughs> basically. He said, no, I, I, I don't have too much time to go and figure out what they all need. But then he added that they're all basic units. So the follow-up question that I have, because I, I hate to be this type of F, um, F and B person, but you know, at Middlesex, with exception maybe in the library, um, nobody's gaming on this stuff. So if you, I understand that the devices are seven years old and they may not be able to be upgraded because of the basic. Um, they may not have Windows 11 or even capable of doing that. Fine. But are we also replacing monitors and keyboards? I mean, if I just go for a base um, desktop with um, um, 11th generation um, Intel 5 processor, um, uh, significant RAM and storage space and other things, um, I could go online and buy these things for $550 with Windows 11 loaded on. So I'd like to have a better understanding of are they buying everybody new monitors? Because the monitors should still work regardless of what the um, the base unit is. So that's going to be a follow up since they don't want to tell us what the needs of these units are. And we're talking about 200 um, and 30 units desktops being purchased for for the school district, and nobody wants to tell us what the usage really is for them, which had me a little gobsmacked, to say the least. Sorry, I'll mute myself again. I look forward to your next unmuting. Um, and for Fitch Academy, um, we just wanted a little more color on the escalation clause that's in the lease, because it seems to the amount that the lease payments have been have escalated each year seems to be very dramatically from 2018 to 2019 it was up 5.67% the following year 12.7% then the year after that 4.7 now it's 10.4 so we're wondering what that's tied to and how how we know how to project it out um for AP Spanish they're asking for they think there might be a jump in enrollment. So there's a significant number of students who are now, who might enroll, but we don't know what the historic percentage is of students taking that course. And so we're wondering if we need to budget for the 100% enrollment for the materials, if 80, you know, generally 85% of the people actually take the class, um, then maybe we should look at the payments there. Um, also said that for the utilities, both oil and natural gas prices are going up and the town paid extra to have dual fuel capabilities installed at the schools. So we're wondering if there's been some sort of analysis conducted to see whether oil or natural gas would make more sense per BTU um, to see if we could like switch to different fuels since we have the capability. Um, and then as far as capital items, the oil tank replacement, we wondered if the administration could provide more detail on the oil tank replacement at the high school. And if it was problematic from the beginning, why did we accept it? Uh, for the elevators, because there are three elementary schools where they need to replace the elevators. Um, and those are the three schools that are being refurbished in coming years to get rid of the portables. So we're wondering if all the elevators are the same age and in the same state of repair and why this is not part of refurbishing the schools 
in like they can be wrapped up into that rather than it was being a standalone capital item even if the state wouldn't reimburse the town for it it would still allow it to be bonded um the board actually saved the timing to for the replacement of the elevators might not allow for the rem remedy of the existing problems and that mike lynch had said that he could no longer either find people to repair the elevators or get the parts because the elevators are old um there was additional discussion as to why the elevators didn't receive a priority in prior capital budgets since this hadn't popped up before um and if they couldn't be added we'd like the administration to maybe request some money to obtain a strong detailed estimate of the anticipated costs of the elevator replacement by school um rather than sort of taking a flyer in the dark. Um, and then people had had questions about the token eat gym because the school's not that old and the crack on the floor presumably hadn't just materialized. So we asked what actions the administration had taken to assess the installation of the floor, requested the original installer to correct the problem, but Rich Rudel said the warranty on the floor had expired, that it is over, so we can't just go back and ask them to replace it. Um, that is it from our end. So this is all in the document that was sent out already, right? Um, and it's a good document because it describes uh, everything uh, that Jack and Beth and Peter have um, pointed out um, and pointed us to. Um, what is the next step? Um, is there a response expected from the Board of Education or what's going to happen next? Mm. Um, we we will forward the document with our side comments because some of the things have already been answered. Um, and so there's no reason for them to answer it a second time. So, you know, like on the paras, we now, you know, we missed the ratio. I mean, it's a big book and it actually was in the front part of the book as opposed to where the each of the individual schools were so there's no reason to answer that that's already there um on the conversation on the um um elevators apparently people have gotten stuck in there i know if i was in um any one of those classes and showed up late i'd blame it on the elevator um but um the the, it's a question of the timing of even if it was put, we were told that it wasn't considered to put into the uh, refurbishment of the three schools so um it wasn't thought of at that time but they did go back to um think about it that you know before they actually start to put shovel to the ground and do this it might be two years from now and so it's um you know beth said jokingly that not only are the machines so old that they have that the parts are old to go get but also the people who repair them may be too old to, to go find people to repair them also because they're that old so that's one that they may have to expedite but it's a four hundred ninety thousand dollar nut and we just like to know that it's 490 and not 525 or 450. So it's not unusual. They're doing that with the Reimagine Library. They're getting some funds um, so that they can get the better engineering and that done. And we thought that the elevators should have the same exercise completed. But they will answer some of our questions. We'll have more questions for them. Um, the, um, the Board of Finance was gathering questions to be submitted um i haven't seen those questions um i don't know if they were submitted already to the board um i do know that um the same meeting that we had with the um board of ed um rtm education is having as well to go over some of their questions um and and some of the data that they had um assuming the same thing will happen with the questions for the Board of Ed. But but then it's up to the board first to 
determine whether or not this is again a reasonable budget and um you know even though guidance was 2.5 based upon the fact that utilities are up and let me mention that both the utilities are co-bid with the board of ed and the town so on monday when we see the um board of selectmen budget we'll see whether or not their utilities are up about the same um which they may well be um and um so with you add the utilities you add with the experience rate in the um health that's up by 8.7 percent effectively um you know they may not be at 2.5 on their core area they may only, they may already be at 2.7 2.8 and um then it's a matter of looking at the growth and determining what part of that growth really can be there i mean we as i mentioned with the bursa they've been transferring money in to cover 160 hours already um we said we weren't in favor of the extra hundred but you know why isn't that already reduced so that there's a zero net sum game on that on on the groundskeeper i'm a little confused on that if i look at the square footage that the schools have had with the exception of possibly adding the homes um house that we purchased and then they took down. But with the advent of certain additional fields that they've built, we there hasn't been an increase in the school properties, the amount of square footage they've had. And we didn't have this problem of groundskeeping and things not being done and other things 10 years ago. We didn't have it five years ago. Um, we were told that it's not the youth teams that are creating messy areas or, you know, some flowers that need to be planted around the schools or that. So uh, what's, what's really going on that all of a sudden, five years later, we can't maintain the same area that we had before? Um, and what's changed? So, I mean, we're going to continue to press on that one. I, I just and and I know that Rich is doing a square footage analysis and um, made the comment that he actually believes that we may be two groundskeepers behind. But you know that's something that we're going to have to uh, pursue and hopefully the board picks it up and runs with it as well. Um, you know we were able to explain my concept of the shell game, which I'll mention again so that everybody understands what i used it for there's been two areas discussed at length which is bring your own devices which we're not expressing an opinion on um or i would prefer that the committee does not and um the open choice and so two emotional areas have um, occupied most of the conversation and yet many of the same board members that aren't discussing um, that are, are focused on those two issues I'm estimating based upon what Rudel said and what Paul Hendricks had said 60 70 thousand um, for the 16 children and that number goes down over time but the same the same board members haven't asked anything anything on the addition of 10.7 ftes not some of which aren't educationally oriented and so that just has me surprised you know of what the focus is and so the shell game is a distraction go find the p and everybody's looking for the bring bring your own or the open choice p when the real P under those shells is why are we at 4% again, effectively? I mean, last year was 4.03 increase, but if you take away the fact that the prior years had 400,000 in that budget, fiscal year um, 21 had 400,000 associated with COVID, 
and nothing in the fiscal year 22 had COVID budget in there. If I bring it back to compare apples to apples, it was greater than a 4% increase. And now we're back to another 4% increase. And we said, that's just not sustainable in the town. So that's the concept of the shell game. And fully understand that the superintendent didn't do that to create the distraction. So, and he understood that what we referenced it to, um, and he understood that we weren't saying that he had done something nefarious to do it. It's just where the discussion has led. And he said he could understand why we would call it that based upon that explanation. So again, we have to first rely on the board to, uh, Beth, is, is that a fair statement of how we responded to that? I think that's a fair statement, yeah. So, you know, we have to rely. We have I to rely on the board to do their job and then the board of finance and go from there. Jack, you, you're touching on interesting points. First, you were talking about the bursar's office. I'm involved in treasury functions. And one of the things that have amazed me over the last few years, how much more efficient systems have become. So I don't understand that manpower in the area of the bursa's responsibility or in the area of treasury could really be a challenge because there's very few benefits from the COVID crisis. But one of them is um, that systems have become more efficient. And that leads me to the other point. We are living in an economy where um, we have to do with fewer people. All the companies in, in, the, in the world will have to find ways to deal with fewer people. And also, we're dealing with the fact that people will be more expensive. It's not even a big deal this year for the budget, but it will be going forward. So everywhere I look in the world outside of the Darien uh, school budget, everywhere I look, people are looking for efficiencies. And they're looking for uh, cutting staff and finding new ways to do business, uh, all things being um, enabled by uh, the COVID discoveries that we can't do things more efficiently than we have in the past. So this budget has taken me back a little bit. And I really haven't heard enough to tell me why are we doing these things the same way we have always done it? Why is there not an opportunity to use um, the technology that has developed during COVID to do things better? And that's the one thing that I want to point out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bert. I, I, I think that's part of the reason we're challenging some of the technology. I mean, just replacing 150 high school desktops, okay, maybe in the old days that's exactly what you did, but if if we don't know why they're being used, if we don't know what is being replaced or replacing keyboards, um, monitors, and the um, main component part, the computer itself, um, why? You know, you you know the uniformity is nice but uniformity has a cost um but on the same token as beth pointed out you know if you're spending a lot of time at middlesex because you have 80 desktop computers that are seven years old and can't do certain things well how much time are you spending on them because if you're giving them all new desktops one would expect that that level of repairs goes away so um you know we'll have to wait and see if we're going to get the um analysis jenny am i correct in my understanding that part of the the need for the bursar has to do with um the compliance with gasby 84 um, in that there's that, there's, I know that we've been handling it. It's a relatively new implementation, right? So is it, is that where the, 
the I think Bert, what you're talking about is when you're managing the f funds. Jack t touched on a little bit about well, could you? I think they looked at could Munis could you do a one stop and uh, deposits and then have Munis redirect checks? And I think the answer is no, right? You can't for an audited purpose. You can't do it. So is that my understanding that's kind of what's driving the need for the bursar for the most part and technology can't help us there because it's an well, accounting auditor well, requirement i'm i'm, well, I'm going to answer, answer something thing. being an old auditor oh. all right there's the old joke shows you how old i am is that um a company went and asked eight accountants how much is two plus two and being the big eight at the time and seven of them came back and said four and the last one said how much do you want it to be and that's the one he hired you know just because the auditor says no we don't we have plenty of subsidiary ledgers around the town that are well in compliance and apparently school cash online because i asked rich this is a rather robust system and you know perhaps it needs to be challenged that if you can maintain that as your subsidiary for your receipt side um and do the transfers and the expenses are coming out of munis as the checks would anyway is there a problem and um, having spent about 10 years in cash management for banks, something that drove me nuts, is that um, prior to the major um, consolidation, certain banks were considered to be receiving banks and other banks were considered to be dispersing banks. Chase was a disbursement bank at the time, prior to its merger with Chemical and then um, J.P. Morgan. And the reason was, is that one bank took in all the wires and then three transfers would be made to the disbursement bank to cover the disbursements. The disbursement bank in their reconciliation would have three wires coming in and 50 wire transfers or 100 wire transfers going out. Much easier to reconcile. I don't think that's B84 changes that basic philosophy. So maybe that needs to be a little bit more conversation with the auditors to go that way um, or to figure out how, you know, what's the cost of a feed, uh, you know, in an interface, um, even though Jen said interfaces aren't necessarily great with Munist, but wh why can't we figure out how, you know, the school cash online can't feed those transactions directly into munis you know see, we, you see uh, jenny and jack both have points but we should avoid falling into the trap of uh, analyzing the small items too much when we don't understand the big picture the big picture should be that we are in a new world the post-covid world which actually, I don't think it's a post-COVID world because this will be with us forever. And what have we learned and what we're doing to live in this new world? And the companies that will succeed are the ones to adjust to this new world and the new challenge. And I don't see it in the budget this year. I see the same 4%. I see, I see the same 5 or 10 people more. I see the same things that are happening in special education. I don't see enough technology in there. I don't really see an overriding um, strategy and strategy change under the COVID scenario that I see in many successful companies. And that is the one thing that bothers me. And that might be me. It's, not the compliance issue and the, and the treasury or the bourse up per se, but there seems to be an underlying um, problem that we are not doing enough for the future and we're doing everything in 4% and 4% and 4% increases every year. And as Jack has pointed out, these compounding 4% uh, can amount to a lot of money over time, especially now that I think 
if you do get a wave is four percent or three, this will be the last time. Next time it's going to be because inflation is, has kicked in. It's going to be five and six percent, and so this is the time to stop it. And that, those are my words. Sorry about um, being so pessimistic tonight. No, I, I go ahead, Iris. Well, I just I don't understand why we have to have a body for GASB eighty four. I mean, it's it's really a reporting of fiduciary funds, right? And so that's a systems thing. And so maybe I could see that we have to pay a fee either to our accountants or to um, our computer systems people to to reset up how we report this. But I don't. And so, and when there may be a cost to incur to do that, but I don't know why we have to have a body just for GASB. Oh, well, this is a point three body, but Iris, I agree. And let me just clarify. My commentary before was many of the people that are requesting financial analytics on open choice or bring bring your own ha, are the ones who haven't made comments. There are Board of Ed members who have been asking about FTEs, more information, and other things along those lines. So I'm not, I don't want to paint the entire board with a black brush over here. I just wish that more of them would be asking those questions and doing those challenges because, you know, they're, they're, these are significant costs going, going forward. Um, I have a comment that you'll probably hear about at the next board meeting um, since my last comments were um, brought to light. But um, my jib comment was, you know, long after these 16 kids, if they're accepted into the program, go to kindergarten, graduate from Darien High School, graduate from college, get married, and have children of their own, we will still be paying for these 10.7 FTEs at a much, much higher clip than the cost of moving those 16 kids through that program. And and that's I, I just want a balance in how we're looking at things. That's that's all we're asking from F and B. You'll hear about that that I made that comment at the end of the next board meeting, I'm sure. Are we uh, if there's any questions, uh Louisa, I know you sent me some, Barry sent me some, um, Martha, um we I try we try to incorporate as many of these comments in. Um, if the things that we have not answered, we will get answers to them. Mark, you also sent um, commentary in that we um, try to express to the board. Um, but um, the only other one that I wanted to mention, and I wanted to say what my approach is, and you guys can tell me if it's the right approach or not. Um, and I'm probably not great in describing this, but um, there's a whole discussion about bringing in a diversity uh, consultant to assist the school to address some of the issues that have been experienced in um, Darien as of late. Um, I believe there's about 40,000 um, that that's being transferred from, I believe, the transportation account because that's a little bit less over to cover and another 50,000 within next year's budget. So it's about 90,000. And there's been a lot of commentary on whether or not this is the right guy or other things like that. Personally, um, I'd like to hear what our committee feels about bringing in someone for diversity. I don't think our committee has any say or any commentary on who the board or the administration brings in, that's their purview. And if we start getting into that, we're far out of our lane. But I'm, I'm interested to know whether or not we're supportive of bringing in, because um, it is a total 90,000 if you look at for next year's budget, more than what they had in the current year's budget for it. I'm just, and, and, and yes, goals will be established and deliverables and everything else like that. You gotta give our, administration and board some credit that they know how to do uh, those things correctly those have been raised but i'm just curious whether or not 
overall, the committee is supportive of bringing in a diversity consultant, regardless of who it is. Jenny. Um, I I have my F and B hat on, and um, if the various parties, the Board of Ed and the RTM Education Committee, and all the parent groups who have been talking about this, if the if it's been decided that that's what they need, I trust that that's what they need. I just am focused on how we're going to pay for it. So I'm I'm really staying. I don't really have uh, I I don't have kids in the school anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm trusting that they know what they need in terms of um, the right, you know, um, staffing and with it, but it's really for me a question of are, how are we paying for this and are you, are you committed to it? Other comments? Thank you, Jenny. Louisa. Yeah, I think I will, I, I will back also with Jenny. I think that the 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 cost is pretty high. I I really have seen a lot of pressure that has been put into the superintendent, especially with the events that happen. And I have seen it from I'm part of the ABC board, and I have I know that it has been a lot of the ABC team just pushing for for this consultant for diversity. I believe that the teachers together with parents we can do the job and i am the same thinking as Jenny. iris you had your hand raised then i'll get to you bert yeah i was just um wanting to know if this is a um the consultant is a um permanent position is it um is it for one year like i don't i i I think there needs I'm I'm not opposed in umbrella concept to someone you know maybe coming in who directs better ways to teach better what whatever but um I just I think there need to be some parameters on what what this person is going to accomplish or not accomplish and I, and I think you can't really decide if that's a a good thing or not until you know what the what what your what your goal your accomplish that you want to accomplish is and just by saying diversity that's whoop that's ginormous all right so, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna put um before i get to you bert um we have three board of ed members um on our call um do one of you um want to provide some of the context for that um because it has been discussed in um, numerous board meetings. Um, ah, Tara, thank you. Hi, everybody. It's been a while. Um, Iris, I and I think it's Iris. I'm sorry, my I can't see anyone's pictures yeah, yet. Yeah, no, it's me, this, Tara. I just, oh, I, hi. I need a little um, more. This is a consultant position. Is not a permanent position, as far as the board has been told. Um, it is supposed to work in conjunction with other groups um, that we have had brought in, um, including the ADL, um, NJCC, if I have all my acronyms correct. Um, it is not, as far as we know, like this is not gonna be one of our FTEs, but as part of all the work we're doing on diversity, the idea, as it has been explained to us, is to bring someone in from the outside and help us help mediate the conversation right it can be a very difficult conversation to have without sort of a mediator so there have been concerns about any consultant um the particular one we're considering and what are their personal beliefs as has been put to us any consultants personal beliefs are not at issue because this is someone mediating a very darian specific conversation with darian stakeholders does that help Yes, that's much clearer. And that in concept, I don't see a problem with that because I do think that a mediator in this situation could probably be useful. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure Duke and Alan could add more. I just that, that's I just that, said we were here. Yeah. To understand what you know, there's so many ways a diversity consultant could have gone. What does that mean? Do, do you hear what I'm saying? And then so this 
definitely clarifies it for me. Yeah, and my understanding is this would dovetail with the equity audit. So diversity will be looked at. I think in some ways people are thinking only racial diversity, but I don't believe that is the mission. And again, that's, that has been to explain the board. It's not. It's looking at all types of diversity, diversity of learners, diversity of experience, and how Darianne can kind of deal with the issues it's facing. Race, religion, all comes into that. Um, but it is not specific um, only to those things. It, it, it could actually end up manifesting in a lot of way, depending on what the dairy and stakeholders lead, lead the path down. So hopefully that's helpful. All right, thank you, Tara, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's why it's always good having some board members here to answer what goes on in those board meetings if we've uh, missed some of that conversation. Um, and anything else on the schools, um, or can we move on? Jack? Yep, sorry, Bert, I forgot, I said that, oh, my yeah. apology. Oh, you sometimes forget me, but um, I will Never always Bert. remind you. Um, yes, um, I think there are two issues. One is looking back in history, and one is looking forward. You should always keep in mind that these are two different issues, but they're closely linked. Since I'm um, of a family persecuted by the Nazis, and many of them died in the concentration camp, and they were not Jewish, they were German. Um, I think to uh, for, for swastika symbols being painted by students in the high school, it's horrific. Anything should be done, and money is no object to address issues like that. Um, and we need a consultant, perhaps, yes, um, for curing these uh, problems, and also to show the community that we are concerned about these things, because they have popped up in this country, too, on January 6th last year. Then on the diversity, um, yes, if you mix those two issues, you get to diversity eventually, even though that's different, okay? That's, one is hate crime and the other is um, a love, um, you know, to, to embrace other people. Uh, those are different things, but they are related. Um, and I think, to have a consultant is a good thing, and we should pay for it. If the guy from California raises uh, people's uh, concern, that's a different story. I, I really don't know. Um, but people should not go into the background of the person too much. They should really start dealing with the issues at hand. And anybody bringing in that kind of um, inside, um, even if he is from California, um, would be acceptable for me, even though I'm not a fan of whatever happens in California, we might have been able to find somebody more close by that wouldn't raise all these issues. That's my opinion. Thank you. Bert, and until you bash the biggest state in this union, um, <laughs> quite elegant, and, and thank you for expressing that. All right, so let's move on. Um, before we get into the budget um, assignments, um, I asked Martha, who's the um, a book, the there's a committee of ARPA. Um, we were asked to provide a representative there um, for it. Um, Martha was uh, kind enough to once again volunteer. Um, and so I um, asked Martha to give us an overview and um, basically said whatever she wants to talk about is, um, is her desire. So Martha, okay. it's you. Okay. Well, I, I've made some notes here, but the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, known as ARPA, established the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal 
Recovery Fund program. The program provides $350 billion in recovery funding for states and local governments. Darian was awarded $6.4 million of these funds. We received about $3.24 million last May, and the other half is expected sometime by mid-year. Uh, Darian's ARPA committee was constituted this past fall, and John Zagrodsky was elected its chair. Um, its charge, and I'll read it directly as it appears, is uh, to focus on efforts to, one, identifying town, resident, and business needs to address negative impacts of the COVID public health emergency, two, identify resident concerns, priority, support for uses of the funds, and three, recommending an allocation plan to the Board of Selectmen. Let's see, our committee has only had a couple of meetings thus far, and most of our time has really been spent on understanding the rules governing how these uh, funds may be spent. The Treasury Department uh, stipulates basically that recipients can use these funds to replace lost uh, public sector revenue, um, and, there, and communities can use a formula that's provided them to calculate their lost revenue, or they can uh, take a standard revenue loss of up to 10 million in dairy, uh, you know, of what they would be uh, provided in ARPA funds. And, and so in this case, it would be uh, 6.4 million for dairy hemp. And this money can generally be used to fund um, any sort of service, including capital projects that uh, a town would no normally budget for. So this is kind of a really uh, loose area in terms of how you can use the funding. Uh, the Treasury Department also said that these funds can be used to the, and I'm quoting right off the Treasury Department, the far-reaching public health and negative economic uh, impacts of the pandemic by supporting households and small businesses, nonprofits, uh, things like that. The funds can also be used to provide premium pay for its essential workers. And lastly, the funds can be used to invest in water, sewer, and broadband in infrastructure. Broadband is not an issue really in Darien, we've decided, but uh, we can invest these funds in uh, wastewater and stormwater infrastructure. Uh, let's see, the, the, uh, these funds provide some flexibility within the four eligible categories, but our town administrator and our director of finance said that they really want to adhere closely to the regulations and not stretch the use on any of these areas. Some other towns, if you look, it looks like they may be stretching in the way they're using these funds, but also it may be coming into the, under the revenue loss calculation, I don't know. There were a couple of restrictions on the uses of these funds. Uh, funds allocated to states cannot be used to directly or indirectly offset tax reductions or delay a tax um, increase, and the funds cannot be deposited in any pension fund. At our January 4th meeting, it was decided that our committee would divide into three subcommittees, one for infrastructure, which I sit on, um, one for health-related costs, uh, could cover things like hiring personnel to uh, provide vaccinations, advertising vaccination incentives, improving building ventilation, so there's, uh, you know, better circulation of air or uh, providing uh, better spacing between uh, desks and personnel. Um, there's a third, cat, and then we have a third category that addresses the negative uh, economic impact of COVID, such as the impacts on business, nonprofits. It could cover things like utilities, rent, and whatever. Uh, and our town administrator has basically indicated that the lost revenue calculation that I talked about could really fall uh, into use under any of these categories. So each of our committees is tasked with brainstorming and uh, generating ideas on the best use of, of these funds. 
uh, the various de town department heads, public works, human services, health, emergency management, uh, have all been you know, sitting in on these ARPA committees and will provide uh, good input. The committees will solicit input from nonprofits, community organizations, the Chamber of Commerce, and the general public. In addition, the committee will review how other communities are deciding funds to uh, see if it generates any thoughts. In general, with the exception of uh, infrastructure funding, the funding should tie to rectifying the problems caused um, by COVID from, and they stipulate this from March 21st, 21, 2021 going forward. So you can't use uh, any funds to uh, sort of retroactively pay for costs incurred related to COVID prior to that date. Our committee has made no decisions on how the funds will be distributed, whether they'll be spread a number among a number of areas or whether they'll focus on uh, just a couple of areas. Uh, the committee, uh, communities need to I, I identify and obligate uses for the funds by uh, the end of uh, December 2024, and the funding must be fully spent by um, December 2026. So that's that's my my brief summary. We've met a couple times. We're meeting next week, and uh, I think we're just sort of moving along right now. Are there any questions from Arthur? Jenny. Hi. Uh, any discussion on whether there, um, the town will look at outsourcing somebody to manage the reporting and compliance requirements, or is that going to be taken in-house? Well, uh, there has been no discussion of that, but I should mention that communities the size of Darien only have to file a report with the Treasury once a year, April 30th. Um, so the, uh, and in is fact, because of the size, because I thought there was a spending, like if you spent, if a project spent more than a million dollars, there's a whole nother level of analysis, a written justification analysis that has to but be performed. So we, have, we haven't gotten into that level of detail at this point. I know um, that, um, I know that Norwalk is, and granted, they're bigger and they got a lot more money than we did, but I know that they're looking at hiring, either going out for RFP for a consultant to manage the process of spending mm -hmm. that money and reporting it versus mm -hmm. hiring somebody full time to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, in some of these communities, they, they have a lot more money. I mean, uh, you know, I think Norwalk, if I remember, is maybe $39 million. Uh, and I, well, I think it depends. It's about paperwork, right? Whether you're yeah. filing a bunch of tiny little projects or one or, you know, you have 10 little projects or 10 big size projects. Yeah. It's, it's Well, we're not to the point where we're, we, we've right. discussed. Just something to think about. I, I, I was, before you go, there is one thing that follows up on that. Um, I had a preliminary conversation with Kay. Um, the RTM is going to, if I'm not mistaken, need to approve the projects that are coming out of ARPA. So there will be discussion, and um, you know I'm confident because we have Martha there, that um, what comes to the RTM, how it's bundled, and other things like that um, will be discussed, and I, I think discussed in this committee, um, so that everybody's comfortable. We may not see 50, we may not be putting forward 50 little um, projects, but we may be putting forward certain buckets of which five projects are underneath that. So that is yet to be determined because they haven't determined what projects they're doing yet. But be assured that the RTM will have um, some reporting back to it um, because it has to approve the financials. Right. So, Iris, do you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted her to repeat the four areas you said there was that y'all are gonna that you divided yourself into infrastructure. All, yeah, place loss, public sector revenue, respond to the far-reaching quote public health and negative economic uh, impacts and pandemic, 
provide premium pay for essential workers, invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Martha, that was actually phenomenal. Um, I probably learned more right. about Opera than I had even understood from I reading. So I really no, I think ARPA committee's webpage, a final ruling has just been released and it's well over uh, 400 pages if you want to knock yourself out. <laughs> there is an executive committee uh, summary, but anyway. Yeah, the executive summary is only 50 pages. <laughs> no, I, 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 I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your service on that. And, um, you know, I know as things come up, Martha, will keep this committee abreast because on many of these projects, if we're not the actual lead on it, we're going to be secondary on um, reviewing how it comes forward. So um, I want to thank you on that. Brings me back to the good old boring stuff. Um, on Monday, we're going to have um, Kate present the um, town's budget prior to the RTM meeting. Um, we still have a whole bunch of things to fill out um, on um, who's going to look at various areas. And with the turnover of some of the people that we had from F&B from last year to this year, um, we uh, have lost some of the people. So I'm going to go read what we have open. Um, if there's something that you did last year, um, I was trying to look for my records, but I'm operating on two different computers and, and a um, passport, and I'm not sure which of the computers or where it is in the passport to look at who we assigned last year. Um, but we have general government, which is basically um, town clerk, um, the, the tax collector and something where we need somebody to look at that. We have community environment, um, land use, um, which is PNZ in the building, um, police and fire emergency. We need um, somebody to take care of both of those. Um, human services, um, li library, um, I'm on and Louisa, um, you were on that. Um, um, with me, um, Park and Rec, we have Jenny, uh, General Overhead, uh, obviously on the Board of Ed, we have uh, Peter and Beth. Um, while the Board of Finance split up Board of Ed Operations and Capital, they split up excess cost and other grants, um, which is interesting, but I have Beth and um, Peter looking at that. On debt, I have uh, Louisa, Jenny, and Bert. Um, the um, Reserve Fund for Capital Non-Recurring Expenses, Grants, and Revenue. Um, I just have myself down on that. That's basically the uh, lobstick for the roads, and um, we make about $20,000 from a rental that ends up in there. So that shouldn't be significant. <laughs> we have other revenues, we have fund balance, and then we have the sewer and parking funds, which interesting, if you look at the Board of Finance records, um, obviously with people not commuting into the city, even though the um, stickers are probably close to where they, they anticipated on the budget. The daily parking is um, way low. And so that fund is probably hurting a little bit. Um, so, um, I mean, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I'm not against that. Um, you know, James, is there any area in specifics that you'd like to cover? Just put me where you need me. Okay, that sounds good. Iris, what did you do last year? I forgot. I think I did library and general government, maybe. But I'm All happy right, to well, go to police and fire and take Stacy's place. I'll put you down for the library and um, general government again. Well, can I do police? 
You absolutely can do police. I, I, always... see Ch I saw Chief Anderson as I went to pay the my association's uh, real estate taxes today. So I happened to run into Bob Bush and uh, Chief Anderson. So he's always uh, good in, um, in that. So yes, they're yours. Oh, thank you. Um, Barry, is there anything? So I'll pick up. Go ahead. Is that Martha? Yeah, I was just going to say that if, if Iris isn't doing general government, I'm happy to uh, pick that up. But but go mm -hmm. ahead, go down the list. Uh, I, okay, I I have I'll do anything too. I have community environment. I have land use in PNZ. Um, I, I ran into Bob Bush, and so um, for those of us old enough to remember, when <laughs> when they first started these three developments, we talked about that over time they were going to need some additional inspectors to do the fire inspectors, other things like that. And so he's been having some part-time people there because they didn't have the um, shovels in the ground, but as these are starting to progress, um, I believe he put in for some FTE, so that's going to have some activity in that um, as well. You know, as I said, oh, it's about time it finally came to, to, to fruition, because it also means we're getting fees associated with that. But um, Barry, is there anything else? Is there anything in particular that you would like to cover? Well, I, I guess one area of interest is park and rec, but uh, I'll, I'll look at whatever you suggest. Barry, you're on park and rec with Jenny. Never a problem. That's a big enough area for the two of you to cover. Um, okay. And if there's Thank anything you. else, we'll, we'll put out. Bill, uh, um, is there anything you're interested in? Uh, you can just put me on whatever you need me on, Jack. Okay, that's fair. Bert, are you still with us, Bert? I'm still here. Um, <laughs> just tell me. All right, then I'll, I'll put some things together and see what they are. Um, I, I went back into the records because I want to be able to say, here's the um, here's the basic departments of what they're covering. So um, I'll, I'll put something together and get it out um, by Monday so that we know. Plus, I also have to double check with Kate on, um, you know, what days these things are being presented. I think they're going to do the same thing they've done in the past, which is go through major departments and not uh, the other. Um, I, I had a brief conversation um, with with Joan and Bert. I'll have a conversation with you about Treasury and what they're going to be um, this year. Um, so um, other than that, um, the other two things, which are um, there's a watershed study that was approved. Um, by the Board of Finance. It's also for about 30,000. It's the initial study. There's some details associated with that. We'll be secondary on that after uh, Public Works. We'll deal with that in a February meeting. Um, I'm in the process um, and I'm almost done and, and Mark has heard about this, of taking every board, every commission, every department, every grant, and saying who's the, and every fund mind you that we have and saying who's primary what what rtm committee is primary on this and actually when i went through this exercise i realized the darien library had no other um committee that made sense to be primary um other than f and b so um, on that grant, which is the largest, F and B is primary. So I'm putting that together, working with, um, I'm going to then send it out to the department chairs, bring it back to rules, work with, um, with TGSNA for them to look at it. 
And part of that is hopefully we can get some of it into the um, Appendix B, um, which will help us to redefine what um, some of these committees' roles are, because the roles go back to the 1950s, maybe, and probably we've all agreed needed to be updated. So I'll be bringing that to this committee for the committee to look and get input. Um, I've had some preliminary conversations with Kate and Jen on it, and they've made some suggestions and comments. And what I've learned is that when I'm looking at the town, both of them have a much better understanding of it than I do. And so it's been very helpful. Um, the, um, so that was one. And the other thing which Mark might be hearing about, I don't know if it, we discussed it at rules yet, but um, I've proposed that, you know, at the beginning of all of our RTM meetings, we usually have other individuals come and give us updates. And the one thing that we don't have an update on are the financials of the town. So um, I perceive that to be an F and B choice. If you look at the um, at the school um, documents that are given monthly by Rich Rudel, they're very helpful on where the school is, what some of the major transfers are, some of the major activities going on, and where they stand on their budget. Um, his last one for the six months said that right now the school looks as if it's going to have a two to three hundred thousand dollar um excess at the end of the year um th but that may change partially because the initial submission in december on um their excess cost ended up with six more students being um applied than what they had in budget and the budget that they have for this year is 67.5 percent but based upon the December submissions, um, it would appear that the reimbursement is much higher. Although the state said once they get the March submissions, um, they expect that to come down. But if it's at that higher level, um, the Board of Ed would have a much greater um, amount to return. It should also be noted that Rich, because he also documents these things, um, the excess cost, um, the educational cost sharing is never in the Board of Ed budget, is in the town budget. We usually receive it in um, August. And we pretty much know what that part is. But there's an adjustment to that based upon the final excess cost analysis. Sometimes it's a little bit lower, so we don't get the, the full amount that was budgeted. This year, it appears that between fifty and sixty thousand dollars additional excess costs was given as part of the educational cost sharing grant, which put that over um, a little bit. And that comes out if you look at uh, Jen's documents that she provides to the Board of Finance. Um, on the town side, since most of it is in that document, um, we'll we'll go and get a um, a little write up on um, from Kate and Jen for which, you know, um, I'm probably going to give it, but it's like a five, 10 minute, here are the highlights. But as we're going into the budget season, I think it's good that we know and the RTM knows where the town is. You know, we're, we, yes, we once again are high on the um, transactions in town clerks because of the housing market and the refinancing of mortgages. Doesn't mean that, you know, as E.F. Hutton or the other things, you know, past um, performance doesn't guarantee you're going to get it the next year. But um, but I think it's important that we know that um, because I think, you know, we vote on the budget. And then other than this committee and um, maybe education, a lot of people just forget that it exists. There will also be a change in the um, how we account for um park and rec if you remember we had to increase the expenses last year because revenue um they blew the revenue out of the water but there were associated expenses 
And since they can't spend over their expense budget, we had to increase that. And we're going to be having to do the same thing again this year come June. So rather than doing this, um, there's a proposed accounting change that we'll see in uh, Kate's budget on Monday. That's going to um, maybe net those two numbers. Um, and then I don't know exactly if they're doing it in a separate fund or how they're doing it, but we should see a change on that. That's about all I have other than um, our um, outstanding minutes from January 10th. So if I have a motion to move that. Oh, I see a Louisa. Do we have a second okay. to Beth? We're there. Um, are there any changes to that, those minutes? And he does a great job. Um, and um, yeah, she really does. Um, and so um, do I hear any no's? Do I hear any abstains? Um, I take Question. it then everyone's in favor of passing. Oh, Jenny. Question. Did somebody drop off? Did we lose somebody? Uh, yes, we lost um, one person. So we currently have one, two, we have 11. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thank eleven. You. Eleven, thank you. I'm like, wait, we had twelve. Now we have eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Peter had an obligation that he had forewarned us about. So we okay. have eleven. So we're assuming that that's unanimous. Um, thank you for spending uh, more time here than I would hope for, but I thought we had a very good Board of Education conversation, which we will continue. Again, our goal is always to try and know where we want to be on these budgets about five minutes after the Board of Finance does their job. Yes, so we that yeah. we're Are done. Are we going to use again open book? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear. Are we going to use again open go the online? Oh or yes, I'm glad. Thank you. And that's part of the reason why, James, I was asking for your specific email. Um, Kate is giving up everyone on this committee access to open gov based upon their email address. Um, actually, Jen is. Um, we can have Jen explain that to us. I'm working, um, you know, we were very fortunate with um, on the board of um, selectmen side that during the budgets we were able to ask questions um, and Jamie, you know, was able to do that. We did it through uh, messaging last year. Um, I'll have a conversation with Kate on how she would like us to do it and Monica this year um, to do that. But, um, you know, the, for the whole time I've been here, the Board of Selectmen has always been very um, open and um, good in working with the RTM committees um, after their board members have asked questions to move this along. So um, I'll get back to us on that. Um, after that, do we have a motion to um, uh, Barry? You know exactly what I'm doing. Do I have a second? Um, I'm James, you're seconding that. You nodded your head. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not asking for no's or abstentions. I'm just assuming we all agree that it's time to um, end this meeting. Thank you all very good much. Good to see some morning. smiles. It was a very good meeting. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Nice job, Jack. Thanks, Pierre. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Olivia. Good meeting, Jack. Thank you.